Hi, everyone. Um, so I just out of curiosity was looking to see like how many plays the last episode I did got the one that, that I called butt stuff and like it's double the amount of plays as the one before it. So that's a little concerning, but um, <laughs> maybe some people were like, oh, it's not the butt stuff I thought it was. Never mind. Um, but anyways, I have not been on this week because oh, there's just been a lot of shit going on and I was debating like whether or not to talk about it. And I think I'll talk about some of it, but I'm not ready to talk about like all of it. Um, so like the stuff with me and my wife, um, I guess has been a little bit more serious, uh, more serious than like I've been saying. Uh, how do I say this? Like, I thought that, like, things were good between us, um, and I I think I was just telling myself that in the hopes that things would go back to the way that they were, but the reality is the stuff I had talked about in prior episodes were, like, last year, we had all those issues, we nearly got divorced, I was a very shitty communicator, and I've talked uh, on here before about the kind of stuff I would do that was not appropriate to express your feelings to your spouse. So the past year, I've been um, working on myself. Uh, I go to therapy every few months now because I'm in a good spot. Uh, My communication is like way, way better. And my God, like I'm so proud of myself. Um there's this whole spiritual thing that has happened to where I think, I, I mean, I feel weird even just saying that, like, it sounds kind of cheesy, but maybe I'll talk about that after. But anyways, so like my, what I'm doing this year is not the same as what I was doing last year. And so what that just illuminated for me was Uh, I mean, like, I don't know how to say this without sounding like a dick, and I'm not even trying to be a dick. I'm not trying to talk bad about Alicia, Um, but she is pretty bad into her depression, Um, and it's taken me a while to kind of understand, like, really how bad it is, only because when my negative behaviors got taken out of the equation, um, and it has not been easy, like... I'm not going to sit here and pretend I'm perfect. Like the majority of the time I have good communication, but there are some times where I'm like not good with it. And then I regret my, I regret whatever I said or did. So I do still have a lot of like work to do in that area, but, um, it's not really been that frequent that I've had bad communication the past six months. It's been really good. Like, and I'm just talking about like communication with my wife, like, as far as how things are going with me, sharing my thoughts and feelings and stuff. But um, it's just turned into one of those situations where, like, I just feel like I'm just giving my all. I have given everything I could to this marriage. And I don't have anything left to give. I just feel lonely and isolated. Um, invisible. So it's some of the stuff that she's been doing has been triggering me um a little bit but I've been okay overall um yeah I don't know I don't even I think that was all over the place but like the gist of it is um and I'm only like talking about this on here because I don't even think she remembers what the name of my podcast is so that's how like um I don't know, I guess that's just how busy she's been with her stuff or whatever. So I'm not talking on here in the hopes that she'll listen to it because that's not going to happen. But I just needed to process through it. I did a little bit today with Laura, which I'll talk about after. But um, yeah, I just, I'm disappointed um, because she's so sick that she still thinks I'm the issue, um, that, you know, she mentioned that I was inconsistent with my behaviors. So like, for example, a week will go by where I've overall been in a good mood. And then I'll start feeling upset because I'm not feeling seen in my marriage. And so like, that'll start creeping back up again. And so once I start having 
those kinds of feelings, I know that they're going to turn into something big if I don't contain it and deal with it. So um, I communicate like, I can't, I just need to, I can't talk, I have to go to my room. And then I just hang out in here, process through whatever it is that's on my mind and bothering me. And I'm getting through it much, much quicker. Um, and I'm proud of myself for all the hard work that I've been putting in. Um, but it's just been really sad because she's not seen my work apparently. Like she's not made any comments about, wow, like you're totally different. Cause oh my God, like I probably sound different on this podcast than I did when I started it last year. But I mean, I just feel like a whole different person. Um, which I'll get into in a, in a minute, but yeah, that's just kind of where we're at with stuff. So we're in a weird situation where she bought like a fucking mattress or something and she's gonna like set up her bedroom in her room in the back of the house and because I've been in my recliner out here in my room for like the past couple of weeks or so maybe a week and a half not like a full two weeks and so the rest of her bed's coming tomorrow and she's like you can have the uh, master bedroom back when my stuff gets here. And that's the only thing that she's really said to me. Um, so it's like, I don't know if she doesn't think that I'm serious about stuff. Cause I asked her to move out. Um, just my mental health has been affected by this and I'll go into more detail. Like when I'm better able to talk to talk, just period, just better able to talk. (laughs) I'll go more into it. Um, I mean, and it's not even like I'm sad. I mean, it is sad. But again, like, I don't feel like devastated, because like, this has been going on for a long time between us. And I think I just finally got the clarity that I needed, like, oh, this is what's going on. And I've tried everything I could to get her the help that she needs. Um, She goes to therapy every week. You know, it's not like she's not doing anything. She is like she is working on herself and she has like a lot on her plate. So I've tried to keep that all in mind too. But you know, when it starts to feel like your wife doesn't even see you, like she doesn't have anything to give you as far as like, you know, intimacy, like love, not like sex or I'm not talking about that. Just like, you know, acknowledging that like, Hey, you're married. I love you. And, you know, and I've told her, I was like, I've been trying to get you back. Like, I keep coming to you and like, where's my wife? Like, bring her back. Like, I don't know, like, how deep into your hole you are, but I want to help you come out. Like, her therapist wants to help her come out. And I don't think she wants to come out. So I, it's just a weird situation. I am looking at it like I'm just going to have to go about my life. Like, it's just weird. Um, You know, because we still have to, like, split some of the bills. Um, I just, I don't know. Like, I used to be the one that would, like, shut down. I still do. But, like, when I used to shut down, it was, like, shut down. Like, oop, I hear that dry mouth. Um. Sorry if I sound all over the place, like usual. Anyways, what was I saying? Man, it's, well, every time I take a fucking sip of water, I forget what I was saying. I don't remember. Um, Yeah, I think I do. Yeah, so it's just weird because I used to be the one that, like, did not... I would never make the first move. Like, I was too proud. I would never be like... I would never go to her and be like, I'm sorry... When I was the one that fucked up the majority of the time, because, like, I really, like, she was about to leave my ass unless I got into therapy. So I was like, oh, don't leave me. So I went into therapy, and turns out it helps. Uh, So if you're on the fence about it, get off and go to therapy. Like, you just got to find a good therapist, um, and it totally, like, turns things around. And I never thought that I would be the person to say that. But anyways, um, yeah, I forgot where I was going with that again. Huh. Oh, communicating. That's what it always comes down to. Like, what did my therapist tell me that, like, the big reasons, like, the the big issues in, like, marriages um, that, like, most people experience is money issues. Like, people fight about money. They don't feel like they're being seen in a marriage. And communication is, like, actually number one where, like, they don't know how to talk. Like, people don't know how to talk to each other. And 
I did not know how bad I was with not only just like the talking part, but the figuring out what kind of words need to come out of my mouth so the other person knows. And I learned how to communicate when I when I found out that I'm autistic, that just kind of pushed me over the edge. And I was like, okay, I'm ready to start like communicating now. Now I know I'm autistic. And here's why I do this. Here's why I do that. I'm sorry I was doing this. Like my only excuse is because this is a part of autism. Like, you know, like I just was able to compartmentalize some stuff and see things about myself, like really, really clearly having that knowledge. And, um, I kept going to her and kept trying and trying and trying. That's never anything that I would do before. And it just kind of gets to the, the point where, I don't know what I'm fighting for anymore. Like, so we're not really talking to each other. We're just kind of existing. And I don't know what she's thinking or planning. So I guess I'm just going to have to like wait. But I made it clear like I wanted her to work toward moving out and to start saving. And that uh, I will give her money that she doesn't have to pay back if she needs help with that. That's kind of where we're at now. And it's just weird to be in this predicament um, and to share a house with your spouse and you don't even know what is going on in their minds. Um, but anyways, so that's that. Uh, I'll talk about like, I'm sure I'll talk about it here and there, like, but not to like talk just to complain just I needed to process through it but anyways so I went and hung out with Laura today and did some of that there too and like she's such a good friend because like she's been there for me this week I've called her a couple of times which is like that's still new for me because I don't call people I don't ask for help I don't tell people like where I'm at but when your wife shuts you out you got to turn to someone and you know, Laura and I have been friends and she's just been there for me. And, um, she's, see, she sees things that, you know, if you're not in the situation and you're on the, on the outside looking in, you can see what's happening. So she's been able to provide me some clarity with certain things and she validated me. And today we talked about it a little bit more and she listened to me and like, I'm not even getting that like in my marriage. And I haven't actually had that in so long that it just feels amazing. Like, oh my God, like Laura listens to me. Like she's validating me. Like she understands. And you know, like it's not even one of those things where I'm just telling my friend what I want her to think about like what's going on. You know what I mean? Like trying to like make myself look good. It's not even like that. I don't believe in doing that. Um, because it always is two people when there's conflict, you know, one person might have more of the conflict, but it's always both parties. It's never just one person's a hundred, hundred percent fault. You know what I mean? So I definitely have responsibility that like I've been taking, but, um, but yeah, so she just listened. She gave me some good advice. Um, she, tried giving me some suggestions on things that I can do to like work through my feelings and like not get too sucked into like sadness and stuff. So it was just nice. Like, I guess this is what it means to have like an actual friend. And I've never had a friend like her before. And I've never had like a genuine friend because I've never made my friendships um, equal. Like they've always been one-sided. I would always want to know everything about the other person. But then when it came to me, like, I didn't want to share anything because I have trust issues with people. And here I am on the brink of a divorce for real, but it is what it is. But it was just nice seeing her. I needed that. And I've never really felt like relieved after hanging out with like a friend. <laughs> That sounds so horrible, but like I've never felt relieved hanging out with a friend except for her because she, like that's me in 20 years like and I can't wait because Laura's awesome and um she just has like a really positive outlook on stuff and she's been through a lot in life, but I didn't realize I needed her and I'm glad that I have her because it it is helpful to talk to somebody that is not just your therapist, you know what I mean? So I went up there and spent the day with her and that was nice. And so like I mentioned the spiritual thing. Um, I am a spiritual person. 
I know I'm going all over the place, but you guys are autistic, so I think you get it. But, oh, dry mouth. Sorry, I probably keep huffing into this, like, <sighs> like, I don't mean to do that. Sometimes I'm just, like, breathing, and I'm like, oh, I'm breathing, like, really loudly. Sorry. Anyways, so I have, I used to be an atheist up until, I don't know, several years ago. I don't know, like a year or two after I was in therapy, I was like, oh, I don't have to like, I don't have to be an atheist. Like, I do believe that there's something out there. So I'm not like into organized religion. I don't believe in like God or anything like that. But I definitely believe that there is just something just, I don't know if it's higher than us or whatever. There's something. Um, So I've been pretty spiritual the past several years, which has softened me. You know, I used to be a fucking bitch. And boy, do I have stories like more than what I've shared on here. Some that like I'm debating, do I share? But anyways, I probably will. Um, wait, what was I saying? <laughs> oh, I forgot. I was just talking about. Talking about Laura. Oh, spirituality. Um, man, this memory shit sucks. Anyways, uh, so yeah, like I have read like the books, like I like Eckhart Tolle. I still don't even know if that's the way you say his name. Joe Dispenza. I consider him my real father (laughs) because like I've got all of his books and the shit that he talks about and describes. I'm like, oh my God, like I just need to quiet my mind down enough to apply some of what he teaches because that shit sounds like. I don't know. If you know who Joe Dispenza is, you know what I'm talking about. That dude's awesome. I like his stuff. Um, So I I consider myself spiritual. And about a couple of weeks ago, I was driving um, to the grocery store because where I go is limited. Um, And it's not even that like, I mean, the stuff is blooming like trees. Oh, did you hear that? Sorry. It was my saliva because now it doesn't want to. If you're still listening, like, I'm not high. Maybe a little. Maybe. No, not really. It hasn't kicked in yet. I really should stop talking about marijuana. I'm not trying to. uh, I don't know. Anyways, I was driving to Wegmans and there's this long stretch of road. um, Like, Wegmans is only like a couple of minutes away. But, like, there's this long stretch of road where there's just a bunch of trees and shit. And, like, it had already been blooming for, like, a couple of weeks. But it's like I saw the tree, like... I looked at a tree, one of my favorite trees, I love trees, and it just looked different, like, the colors looked more vibrant, um, oh, man, I suck at talking and explaining things, um, it's almost like when I put, like, when I, when I put glasses on for the first time, and I was like, oh, there's all this stuff that, like, I haven't been able to see, because my vision sucks, and so that's kind of what it felt like, a couple of weeks ago and I thought it was a fluke but then I remember like I went somewhere else a few days later and it was the same thing everything just looked brighter and more alive and vibrant um I don't even know if this makes sense and I don't know why I don't know if that's because like um, I'm just at a point where I'm like, oh, like there's no more I can give. I'm just at peace with where things are at now. Like I have no idea, like, but it was like that today, like to go see Laura, it's a little over an hour each way. And like, there's a bunch of like, it's country, like there's a bunch of trees and shit. And like, it was a nice day and I don't even like the sun, but I tolerated it enough. Um, and everything looked alive. I wish I could like not sound like a weirdo trying to describe this but anyways so I don't even know why things are looking like this now to me um I mean that's got to be a spirituality thing right like if I'm seeing things differently I don't know like maybe I'm just trying to like come up with some bullshit to explain away like you know how when you don't have like a story to explain something you just kind of create one and tell yourself like yep this is what's going on this must be happening but I don't even know what to make up right now because I don't know why things look like. It's like, is this what things look like when you're on mushrooms? I've never used mushrooms. 
but I've, or ecstasy or something. I've heard people talk about like things look more vibrant and shit, but I wouldn't know what that looks like. So I just thought I would share that. It really is not going to impact you in any way. Um, (laughs) I just needed to get that out there. Does anybody know what this is? Um, because I should just switch the name to like the question podcast because I have questions about everything and it sucks not having answers. It sucks. I wish like, I just, I have to have answers. Uh, but anyways, um, I don't know what this episode was for. Um, I mean, obviously to like help myself, that's pretty selfish, but that's not why I made the podcast. Maybe like, you know, somebody out there is going through a rough time too in your marriage or you've had something like this happen or I don't know. It's not just you. Um, I never thought that I would end up in a situation like this. Um, but I know I have a lot of processing to do. I have therapy in a couple of weeks. I don't even feel the need to like go sooner because I feel okay. Um, I think, like, I just probably saw this coming in some way, and, um, like, this is probably the worst analogy to give, and I'm sorry, but, like, you know, like, I don't know, uh, if, like, if you had, like, a family member that, you know, like, gets diagnosed with cancer, and, like, they're told, like, oh, you have, like, you know, so much longer to live, like, you know, two years, let's say, or something, I'm not trying to make light of that, I'm just, I don't know how to explain things without trying to, like, compare them to something, and, like, so, the family has, like, two years to grieve while that family member's still alive, like, you know, that whole thing, and so that when the family member actually passes, it is sad, but it's not, nearly as sad as it would have been if it was like something unexpected you know what I mean um because you've had time to think about it and you've been processing through it and that's kind of how I feel like the past year and a half two years um I just guess I've been kind of processing things like here and there and now that like I've made up my mind like I can't I feel like I deserve better and that even feels weird saying that out loud because i immediately have this thought of like who am I to sit there and be like I deserve this but I do I know I do um but again like when I you know talk about this in future episodes I am not trying to bash her I don't believe in doing that she's not a horrible person she's a really good person she's just going through something that like nobody's able to help her with right now and it's affecting things and um it's not like I'm just walking away like I've tried everything I could I've tried everything and it's not working and I just feel depleted um and it feels good talking about it on here because you know I know that it's relatable to some people hopefully that are listening um but I would like to talk about this a little bit more. Maybe I'll like just do one episode and like get it out of the way. And then like, that's the only time I'll bring it up again, maybe, or for a, a while. Cause I don't want to be like one of those people that has the same issue that keep bringing up every episode. Um, so I'll probably just do that just so like, because this is for autistic people, but you know, we're autistic and we have life problems just like anybody else does. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you for listening. If you got this far, um, so got it. Some encouraging words or some support or something would be nice from anybody out there that wants to spend 30 seconds to write me a sentence and email it to me. Like it's not anything I would ask for usually, but you guys are autistic. So like you guys are cool, um, in my books and I would really appreciate like, I don't know, just a little sentence or two about, yeah, like, I I feel what you're going through, like, or something. It's just nice uh, to know that you're not the only one or that other people are... Well, I, anyways, I gotta go. I gotta go. Because the marijuana is starting to kick in. And that is my cue to stop recording. Okay, thank you for listening. And goodbye.